I have a, a young man the age of 29 now that has IDD and um, started in the system when he was about three years old, made my first phone call for support to the Exceptional Children's Assistance Center here in North Carolina. And I remember Connie Hawkins answering the phone telling me, as a parent, you're going to have to educate yourself about how to navigate the systems in order to get the supports that he needs. We moved here, like they said, from Massachusetts when Brendan aged out of the system. And for our experience, it was Easter Seals, UCP, and New Bern. And two women in particular, when we came down, said to us, what can we do to help you? What can we do to help Brendan be successful? And that was when we knew that this was the right decision for us. It, it, it's extremely hard as a parent to, you know, to learn everybody's different systems and everybody's language and acronyms to be able to navigate. So this was the first time that I was actually going to be able to look at the systems and see if I could make any kind of headway into how do we make it easier for access for families to navigate within our state. Sharing the community living community has really helped me to uh, be able to make sure everybody has a voice at the table. Um, Brandon's in, in our uh, community living community and um, really helping to educate the system, I think, and looking at system changes that could be done to make it easier for families in North Carolina to navigate and access the resources and supports that they mm -hmm. need in our state. Being able to take the information that I've learned here and taking it back to my community has been just a, huge. Yeah. A huge. It, you know, coming to Raleigh three time, four times a year and learning this information and then taking it back and making sure that the people that need to know that uh, resource is available that, uh, to get their feedback is what we need to be doing in our state around uh, advocacy and education and support. You begin to see there's a purpose for everything and I think for, for our family for sure we found our purpose. It makes sense that we were giving this lived experience so that we were able to help others mm -hmm. in our Absolutely. community. Yeah. And my role as a parent is, it's a privilege to advocate with Brendan because he just, he doesn't see himself as a person with a disability and we've never treated him as a person with a disability. He's our son who, by the way, his muscles don't work the same. Um, so he wants people to know that and he got invited to be on the council probably two or three years ago with Philip or by Philip and it's just been an amazing experience we've met so many people um, <laughs> and just it, it's been an honor to as a parent to see that we're not alone um, and as Brendan's mother I guess to know that there's support for him that he feels empowered to advocate, to help people educate, and and we're trying to hard to help him educate. I, I just <laughs> have come to love and respect everybody on mm -hmm. and seeing what you do on the council, but then also after five o'clock for me as a mom, which sometimes is just as big, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to support. Mm -hmm. You know, that we can all kind of go out after official business and go... Oh, we did that one. <laughs> <laughs> we got through that one, too. <laughs> and I think that that's the key, you know, I think just in the last little bit I've gone, okay, we all talk about what's going to happen when we're not here. What what does the future look like for him that's when scary. we're going yeah. on and, and passed on and um, knowing that I'm now have the knowledge and a lot of that's come from the DD Council work and the system change and work that we've done in our state to give him that that ability but I, or that opportunity as well as me to have that peace that when I'm gone yeah. he's going to have a community that's huge. supporting yeah. him. So. That's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. It is. Call you next year. <laughs> <laughs> She knows I do. <laughs> <laughs>